Welcome back everyone to the React In-Depth YouTube series. In this video, what we're going to do is go over a bunch of exercises together to get more practice with the use state hook in React. In the previous video, what we saw was a kind of theoretical framework for how use state works and a bunch of examples of some of the caveats and things we need to watch out for when we're using the use state hook, which is actually the first hook that we've actually been learning in our uh, React journey together. In this video, we're going to do is go over a bunch of exercises to really make sure that we can hammer those concepts home and also see a bit more tricks that might up, uh, come up or uh, when we're working on kind of projects uh, or in the industry, just to make sure that you have enough practice uh, so that you don't really uh, get too scared when those things uh, kind of come to bite you. So let's take a look, um, starting with a warm up exercise. So um, as with all the previous exercises, uh, what I have is in the description below a, a GitHub link to the repo for this uh, course. And you can kind of uh, pull that down and kind of uh, have all that stuff there for you if you don't want to type this all out or pause the video. But if you don't want to use any of that kind of Git stuff or you don't really uh, know how to use that or not too familiar with it, uh, you can just pause the video and I'll kind of go through each of these and uh, give you a chance to kind of uh, do it yourself before we kind of go through a, a solution together. Okay, so for this one, uh, this is the warm up exercise. Um, I'd like you to create a new uh, V project for React. Um, and I guess before I go further, I should also mention that uh, kind of this goes without saying, hopefully for all the exercises, once you create one uh, V project, you can kind of reuse it uh, for all of the different exercises. You don't really have to create a new one for each project or for each exercise, sorry, even though I kind of have that as a first instruction, these are meant to be kind of independent exercises for the most part. So just in case you kind of want to just jump into one, uh, I just want to make sure I leave that instruction in there. Um, so you can definitely do this with just one uh, V project and I'm going to do that in this video and I encourage you to do the same if you're going through every single exercise. So for the warm up, um, I would like you to create a counter.jsx file uh, that has a counter component in it and just export that counter component. Um, in that counter component, I want you to uh, return uh, an H1 along with two button elements and um, one of the buttons should have a minus sign in there. So that's just kind of the minus symbol, which is like right uh, at the top of the uh, number row in the top right of your keyboard and the plus symbol here as well for the second button, right? So kind of like a, a go down and a go up button um, right below uh, this H1. Then the goal of this exercise is to make it so this H1 uh, displays a counter which starts at the number zero. Uh, so that when you click the buttons, depending on which button you click, um, it will actually uh, react uh, appropriately. So uh, if you click the uh, minus button, it's going to go down. So for example, if you're starting at zero, it's going to go to minus one, minus two, minus three, the more you click it. And uh, vice versa, if you click the plus button, it's going to go uh, back upwards along the number line. So um, try that out give that your best shot. Uh, and once you do import it into the app and actually make sure it works. Uh, and uh, if you have that working great, um, if not, you can definitely uh, come back and check out the solution. So give that a shot. Okay, so to start, uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, just create a npm create uh, byte at latest here, just so that I can create a project and I'll create it in this folder. Um, it's gonna ask for a project name. I'll just say use state exercises, exercises. It's hard when it wraps around, it's like that. Hopefully I did that correctly. Then we have React over there. Then we have JavaScript. Um, it's a bit cut off of my head there, but I think you kind of get the point now. It's gonna create a folder here. I'm gonna to switch to that folder. I'm gonna run an npm install in that folder. That's gonna install all the node modules and the dependencies. Um, while that's doing that, I'm going to open up my main.jsx file as well as my app.jsx file. Uh, in the main.jsx, what I'm gonna do is just get rid of this index.css just so that um, we don't really have styling in there that we don't need. And in the app.jsx, uh, I'm gonna kind of get rid of uh, pretty much everything here. I'm going to keep the use state because we're actually going to use that. Um, but I'll get rid of pretty much all of the code inside um, of this app. Actually, I guess technically what we're going to do is we're going to create a counter element anyway. So I'm actually not going to really be using um, this file. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm just going to leave this as is and I'm just going to close it. So the only real change I have here is I removed the CSS from the main.jsx file. Um, so um, in previous videos, we, we uh, altered the app file, but in this one, we'll just make our own uh, file, which will be a bit easier. Um, I don't know what that's doing there. I don't want to actually visit that right now. Um, I'm going to create a new folder here just for organization purposes inside my source folder. Uh, and I'll just do like ex1 um, here just so I can separate the different um, uh, content. Uh, and while that's uh, now that's done, I think what I have is 
I have all my stuff in there, so that's great. And I can run uh, npm run dev, and that should actually start my dev server um, now that the dependencies are installed, and that's gonna create this uh, right here. So uh, what I'll do is let me just open that to make sure it actually works. And there we go, I'm gonna zoom in on this as well, and I'll uh, open up my um, console here as well, just so that we have that all set up and ready to go. Uh, and then the, the console and the elements tab. Perfect, so uh, I'll create a, um, a new file inside my ex1, and I'll call this counter.jsx. And inside counter.jsx, I'm gonna create a function, uh, I'm gonna call this counter, and in here I'm going to return, and in here I'm gonna return a bunch of JSX. I know that it has to have a uh, button as well as, or sorry, two buttons as well as the H1. So I know that, that uh, oops, not a double return in there. I know that I can't return that uh, as sibling components. All React um, elements need to be returned uh, kind of with a one singular uh, parent element. So I'm just gonna create a fragment to hold these three elements in here. I'm gonna have an H1. Um, I'm not gonna put anything in there for now. I'm gonna have a button. Uh, inside the button, I'm just going to put uh, a minus, oops, there we go, minus sign. Uh, technically, I think there's a, um, like the ampersand minus or something that we can probably, which is a bit more correct to use, but I'll just put that there for now, just to make things simple. And then here, I'll put a plus. Um, okay, so that's good, that's great. And um, you know what, for now, uh, just, just to make this a little bit more fun, I'll just do counter and I'll start at zero, just like that, just so that we can actually see this working. And I'll import it and then we'll actually start putting all the fun stuff inside of here. So all the infrastructure to get this working, uh, we've seen this before in our previous component videos. Uh, so I'm gonna export default uh, counter uh, right here, and that'll allow me to go into uh, any other file like main.jsx in this case, and I'm gonna say, um, import uh, counter uh, from uh, uh, the the ex1 folder and then counter.gsx. So it's just uh, auto completed for me right there. And I'm going to replace um, my app here with my counter element, and I'm going to save that. And if I switch back here, what we'll see is now I have kind of a non-functioning um, skeleton for our warm-up exercise, which is our uh, counter, but it's not reactive because we don't have any state um, uh, included here. Great, so uh, let's switch back to our counter here. And uh, now we know we need to use uh, state because what I wanna do is I want the DOM, right? I want uh, this DOM right here, so this uh, this element in the DOM to update this number, this number zero, every time I, I, I do something with these buttons. So um, I'm going to uh, import uh, use state uh, from React, just like that. I'm gonna create a counter. So I'm gonna say const count uh, or I'll say count and I'll say set count uh, and this is equal to use state of uh, starting at zero. Okay, so I want to make sure that my initialization for the state is at zero. And what I can do now with that is instead of hard coding zero as just plain text here, I can kind of uh, fill that in with dynamic JavaScript, which is coming from this uh, state function, right? So now I can have it here. This is the variable count, uh, the evaluation of the variable count and it's put into the text for that DOM node. Now, if I switch back here, nothing looks like it changed, uh, just the zero uh, kind of shifted a bit because it's a, a separate text node, but everything else is the same. Still not reactive, nothing is changing because we haven't created those event handlers or called our set state function. So let me switch back here. And um, what I'll do here is I'll just create two functions. You can do arrow functions or regular functions. I'll just do regular functions for now. Um, just in the future, we might do, uh, we might need to deal with the hoisting and everything to make things simpler. So I'll just put that all here in as regular functions. Um, and I'll point out where things might get uh, complicated if uh, we need access to this values or, or things like that, which we usually don't need to if we're using um, hooks or functional style programming. So um, function, and I'll say uh, increase count, uh, can't spell, increase count, uh, count, there we go. Uh, and yep, there we go. And I'll say uh, what increase count is going to do. It's going to do a set count and it's going to, now remember for our counters or for our uh, state functions, they have to, they have to give it a brand new value. Uh, we can't just, uh, we can't just take the value um, and uh, like update it in place or anything like that. So this is a number, so it's a bit easier, but we want to actually give it a brand new value to set the state to. So in this case, I'm going to say the previous count uh, plus one. And I'll copy and paste this function because we basically have another version of this. I'm gonna call this decrease count. And this is going to uh, set it to um, count minus one. 
So we're going to grab the count. So for example, if we click this the very first time, it's going to go from, uh, this is going to be zero, and then we're going to set it to zero plus one, which is one, um, and vice versa for decrease, it's going to go the other direction. Um, okay, now, still nothing's going to happen, uh, even though we have these uh, functions set up, because nothing is actually hooked up to call those functions. So I'm going to say when you click the on, well, the on click for uh, the minus button, I want to call decrease count. And when you do the uh, on click for the increase button, um, of course, we want to do the increase count. All right. So um, we have to make sure to add these event handlers. That's going to call these functions, which is going to call the state setters, which is going to update the state, which is going to cause React to re-render the component, which is going to return a new set of JSX with this value changed out. So let's see if that works. I'm going to switch back to Chrome here. Um, I'm going to click up. There it goes up. There we go. And you can see that in this text node right here, it is actually being updated uh, correctly and it can even go into the negatives, which is pretty awesome. So that's pretty fun. Um, so hopefully that makes sense and you can kind of see the flow of data here. Um, frankly, I think even, uh, I'll just close this off just so we have a bit more space. Um, even with examples like quote unquote simpler like this, um, I, I would really encourage you uh, to explain this to yourself, right? Um, so what, what I mean by that is like, a lot of people will see an example like this and be like, oh, this is like so simple matter. Like this is ultra boring. I'm pretty sure this is like even on a documentation site, how to create a simple counter. Like this is, um, this is like, why would you even do this example? Everyone knows how to do a counter in React, right? Um, so I'd like you to imagine how would you explain this? Like for example, in an interview or, in, or just someone who doesn't know anything about React, right? Uh, you'd want to be able to technically communicate the ideas behind React and behind things like state and uh, the event handlers and re-rendering and all that kind of stuff um, in a simple way as possible to someone else who is not familiar. And if you can do that, uh, frankly, that is more than a lot of people uh, even bother trying to do. And it's such a useful skill because once you practice doing that, um, it becomes quite fluent and natural as you start doing it more and more. And it really is apparent in things like interviews and other forms of communication. So um, just to uh, do a quick version of that with you right here, what we're doing here is we're creating a, a function called counter, has a bunch of stuff in here. We're returning JSX. Uh, won't go too deep into that because we have videos on that on the channel. Um, in here, we're returning an H1 with two buttons that have event handlers on them. When we click, uh, let's take the minus button, for example, uh, we are uh, calling a function that is actually changing um, the state of this component. So what does that mean? Well, we can use variables inside of the, uh, the, the JSX um, or what gets rendered out to the actual DOM um, in, in a dynamic way. So here we're saying we want to render out the number count, uh, but we also are going to be changing that count through a function uh, every time we call the event handler for this button. And that's going to call uh, this set state function, which React uses to actually rerun this entire function, rerun this whole thing here and recalculate kind of what that uh, has been changed to. So for example, the first time it's going to go to, uh, to one, up to one from zero plus one, that's one. And we're going to see that new value uh, entered here uh, in this H1 uh, when that JSX get run the second time after we click that set, uh, the, the set count or set state function the very first time. And that just keeps happening over and over again, where that singular node in that DOM in this case uh, can keep updating, getting changed every single time that set state function is being called so that we can actually visually see it in the actual document object model. Cool. So, um, that was a bit wordy, but hopefully that kind of made sense. Um, I'm sure that you can come up with a better explanation if you were to sit there and uh, kind of talk it out to yourself. So let's take a look at uh, exercise one. I, I probably should have called this warm up. Um, you know what? I'm just going to do that really uh, quick right now. I'm going to call this warm up, and I have to change uh, my updates here. So I'm going to click no. I know uh, Visual Studio Code likes to do that. Uh, where it does it automatically, but I'll just do this manually here just so we can see that that's not coming from warm up in main.jsx and this is still working correctly. Okay, so um, I'm going to create a new uh, folder here. I'll call this ex1 just to prep for the next exercise. So exercise one. So again, don't have to create a new React project for this. Uh, feel free to use the existing one. What we want to do for this one is create a textbox.jsx file. Again, it's going to create a textbox component that you can export. Inside this text box uh, component, I want you to create an h1 uh, tag uh, as well as an input element uh, right below that h1 tag. 
So uh, just an H1 with an uh, input. Uh, then I want you to make it so that when you type into the input box, uh, the H1 tag is going to update to match the text that's been entered into that input box, right? So if I start typing um, hello, like H-E, it's going to show H-E in the H1, and then L-L-O, it's going to show the whole hello in the H1. And then uh, as with the other exercises, uh, swap out what you're importing into main.jsx with this component uh, text box in this case, and make sure it actually works by testing it in the browser. So give that a shot, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so uh, I'll create a new file here. I'll call this uh, textbox.jsx, um, and I'll call this function textbox. Should go a bit faster since we have most of the stuff set up already here. I'll also do the export here while I'm at it. Export default uh, textbox, and that's fantastic. Now, um, I also know that I need to import use state, so I'll do that uh, just so that we have that ready. And here I'm going to return some JSX, and I know that I have at least two nodes, uh, so I'm going to wrap this in a fragment because I don't really need to style this with a div or anything like that. So I'll just go uh, with a simple fragment for now, uh, h1, and then this is going to be uh, below it an input tag, uh, input type text. Okay, so now what do we want to do? Let me let me just kind of set it up so that when I go to main here, I actually can import this. So I'll import text box from ex1 textbox.jsx. I'm going to switch this out with the text box right here in the main file. Okay, I'll save that, switch it over here, and we can see that that's all showing up. The h1 is empty, there's nothing in there, and the text box is right below it. Um, interesting. Uh, you can see my CSS skills. I actually don't know why the h1 is showing up so large there and overlapping the, uh, the input, but that's cool. Um, hopefully that's not a problem. I'm sure it's fine. Um, I think it's because it's empty or if someone knows, that would be great. <laughs> uh, you can see my CSS skills in action. I can't even explain that one. Um, okay, so uh, text box right here. And what we want to do is make it so that when we type in this box, this here changes, right? So let's, let's kind of break this down for a second. Um, what what do we need to find out what is being typed in this input box? Well, um, generally in the DOM, we have the event handlers, right? So on change or on, on input. Uh, on input is usually the one that you want to use. Um, so let, let's let's kind of hook that up. So we'll say on input. Uh, you can also do on change. In fact, in React, it's actually the same thing. Um, I believe there are some small differences. I'm not really sure why I did that, but uh, I'm just going to go kind of with the DOM API here, and you can actually change it to uh, on change too if you like. So on input, we're going to call a function. Um, I'm going to call this function uh, handle uh, handle input change. Okay, so I'm just going to call this function right here. Now, when the event handler gets called, we know that we get access to that event object. And um, we can put that here if we want, for example, as, a, as an actual uh, parameter to this function. And React uh, will automatically pass us that event object um, as the first argument. So just to test that that works, I'm going to do console log of that event object and see what happens. I'll save that. I'm still not using state or anything. I just hooked up the input to show what happens when I'm typing in here. Um, for the actual event object. So let me switch back here. I'll switch to my console and I'll start typing hello. I'll do H E L like that. Uh, and you can see that we're getting uh, events. These are not the, the base DOM events. These are wrapped up in what's called a synthetic event from React, but everything else is the same. Um, so if we would normally do like E dot target dot like value, right? So uh, E dot target is this input. So I'm going to uh, open that up and then we can see that dot value right here is H E L. So that's great. Um, and uh, I guess right now, this is since this is live, um, this is actually a, a bad example of, of me doing it three times because uh, this actually gets evaluated. Um, it, it, this would be H first and then E and then L. Um, so this is HEL because it's actually being evaluated after I open up this box, I believe. Um, so just, just to make sure that that's true, if I start typing H in here, uh, what we'll see is um, target.value is H. Um, and then if I start typing an E in here, um, then target dot value is going to be H E, um, and it's still H over here, right? So uh, these are live nodes and they get updated. Um, so just just be aware of that. But but they are getting each uh, one at a time. So E dot target value is what we're interested in. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna say console.log 
e.target.value, make sure that it actually works as intended. These steps, and if, if you're thinking I'm going a bit slow here, that, that's great. Um, I know, um, honestly, um, like go faster, fast forward on the video. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen this before, it's really important to kind of go step by step to make sure you're testing your assumptions and you're not just writing like 10, 20 lines of code um, and then testing it. Because um, as we're going through this, you want to make sure that your assumptions are correct and what you're actually getting through programmatically is what you expect it to be. So um, I'm going to do this one step at a time here. I'm going to refresh the page again. I'm going to start typing E and then H E and then L L O. There we go. So it's working as expected, right? So this is E dot target dot value as we are going through this. So we saw that before in the events video, um, but that is nice to know that that works as expected. Now we're pretty close, right? So what do we have? Well, we have the actual things being typed into the input uh, and we have it being kind of in like real time as we're typing each letter at a time. Now we just need to kind of put that value in here, right? In this H1. So how do we do that? Well, um, we need state, right? Because this needs to be dynamically and reactive to whatever is happening with that input box because we can't just hard code something in here because it changes over time. So we need state for that. Um, so I'm going to say const, um, and in here I'll destructure out from a use state. Uh, well, I call this, I'll call this, um, I guess, text, uh, set text. And uh, this is going to equal to a uh, use state. And it's going to start off as an empty string, right? Because there's nothing uh, to start in that box. And I'm going to put that uh, here inside of this h1 for the actual state value. So if I switch back here, what we'll see is that there's still nothing in here, right? Um, if I if I reload this page, there's, there's nothing in this box um, because that's what an empty string does. Um, or, or sorry, there's nothing in the H1 because that's what the empty string does, right? Uh, the, the H1 is empty uh, because there's nothing in there. Um, so we can change it using set text. And instead of console logging out e.target.value, I can do set text of e.target.value. And um, I can now refresh this page and I can start typing in here and I can say H E L L O. And even the backspace works, which is pretty awesome, right? Look at that. There we go, backspace. Um, and we got spaces working. All that stuff works, which is pretty awesome. And what we can see is if we switch back to the DOM here, we can actually see that this does get updated. You can see that that DOM node is being updated correctly, uh, but everything else is staying the same, which is nice. So that's the thing that's being uh, removed and added from the DOM as we're changing the text inside this H1 and React is the thing responsible for kind of handling all that behind the scenes for us so we don't have to worry about it. So that's pretty awesome. Um, hopefully you found that one interesting and um, it, it kind of made sense. Again, I would encourage you to kind of go through that same process with the warm up, try to explain everything inside of uh, this exercise um, and then kind of go on from there. So I'll just comment out this console log for now and we will take a look at exercise. Two. Okay. So uh, for this one, again, uh, create a React project uh, if you haven't already. Uh, but what we're going to do in this one is create a form.jsx file to create a form component that you export within it. Now, if you're already kind of feeling a bit uneasy whenever you hear form, um, I'm with you. Uh, I think honestly, uh, forms are a bit, uh, they're a bit scary to deal with, to be, to be quite honest. Even in the vanilla DOM, they can be a bit scary. There's some techniques that make that kind of fear go away and to really uh, make it quite wonderful to deal with actually. And we'll see some of those in later videos when we actually start dealing um, with references and how to actually do data handling and data fetching and working with forms in more depth because it's such a central component of working with applications. Um, but for now, we're just gonna build up to that. Uh, so don't worry too much about it. Um, now, inside this form component, I want you to create three input uh, text fields, uh, one for first name, one for last name, and one for email, and then create a submit button below the inputs uh, and wrap all of these in a form element, right? So the form is going to have three inputs and then the submit button uh, below the three inputs. Um, then what I want you to do is add an H1 uh, element below the form element, so outside of that form element, okay? Um, and, and set it to just empty to, to start just like we had with our previous example. Now, what, what I want you to do for this one is I want you to make it so that when you type into the three input elements and click the submit button, the data for the three inputs gets displayed inside the H1 element as text. 
And I'm going to leave it up to you to decide how you want to format that text. Um, to be really simple, if you want, you can do JSON stringify and just dump it in there. You can do really whatever you want. Just make sure the data that's inside those input elements somehow gets formatted in some way, um, uh, beautifully or not beautifully, and gets shoved into that H1. So that when you click on that submit button, after filling in those fields, the correct um, form information gets transferred into that H1 in a way that uh, someone can visually see uh, in, in some kind of structure. And if you change those elements or, or change what you type into those uh, input tags and then click submit again, that H1 gets updated correctly again. Okay. Um, and as a bonus, if you want, you can think of a few ways you can do this. Um, and we will really explore this in more depth later on. I'll probably just touch on them to start uh, without going too deep until we get uh, access to a few more tools. So give that a shot and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so uh, once you've tried that, I'm gonna create a exercise two folder here and I'm just gonna create a new file. I'll call this form.jsx. Uh, same thing in here, I'm gonna call this function form and I'm going to return some JSX in here. So what did I say? I think I said this is all gonna have a form in it. It's gonna have some action. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna ignore the action. I'll just get rid of that just to really simplify what we have in here, um, but I'll add something there later. Um, then I'm gonna have an input, input, input. And just for us, so that this makes a bit more sense, um, I'm just gonna say the name for this input uh, is gonna be uh, first name. I'm gonna copy this a bunch of times. And I'll say this is going to be L name for last name, and this is going to be email. Okay. And right below this, I'm going to have a button, uh, and it's going to say submit. Uh, I could also do an input of type submit, and, and I'll just say type equals uh, submit. Great. And then below this form, I'm going to add an H1, and that's going to be empty to start. It's going to have no content inside of it. So I'm going to export default this form. Oops, there we go. Um, and I'm going to import that into main.jsx. So I'm going to say import form from uh, exercise two, the current folder, and then form.jsx. And I'm going to replace my text box with my form. Perfect. So let's see if that works. I'm going to switch back here. Uh, I'm going to reload the page. Uh, and there we have our, our three different forms, um, or three different inputs, sorry, uh, with our submit button. Okay. And you'll notice if I click the submit button, the page actually reloads because we haven't actually trapped. Um, or prevented the default for this event yet. Uh, so hint, hint, if you haven't gone to that stage yet. Great. So let's uh, let, let's kind of think about how we can kind of kind of go about this. Um, I'll switch back to form here. So what do we need? Well, what we want is exactly what we had in the previous exercise. We want a way so that when you type into these fields, we are storing that data somewhere right we don't have right now like a, a like a, a place where we're storing it kind of in the dom right because this is not going to actually show until we click submit so we kind of need a place to store the data for each of these um, in such a way that later on we can actually have our h1 show that value well technically actually what we we could do this without state once we, once we know uh, of a different hook later, but we're gonna use state for this um, anyways, because it's actually gonna allow us to do a few things if we wanted to refactor this code in the future as well. So um, let me just import use state here for a second. Import use state from React. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just create these three states right up here. So I'll say const f name set f name equals use state, and this is gonna be an empty string. I'm gonna create that three times. So this is gonna be L name, and this is gonna be set uh, L name, and this is going to be uh, email, and this is gonna be set uh, email right here. Okay, so those are all gonna be uh, kind of uh, empty, uh, empty strings to start. Now, remember the thing that I said before in the previous video that um, really what we need state for are things that get rendered out to the DOM such that when they change, we want the DOM to, or we want React to re-render this part right here. Now, technically what we're doing right here is unless we actually use that data in here right away, where you don't have to click submit, but that shows up right away, kind of like a preview, technically we don't actually need this as state, but we haven't learned another tool yet 
now which is called a reference uh, so we can actually start seeing the differences slowly slowly but i want to keep that back in your mind that technically speaking if we don't actually need to show it in the dom right away um, in a reactive way such that it needs to show up instantly as soon as that state changes uh, maybe state is not the right option okay so uh let's see how we can do this so um i'm gonna say uh function uh handle uh f name and I'll make that as a function and I'll call a function uh, handle L name. This is a function too. And I'll say uh, function handle email. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make it so that on input, we're going to call a uh, handle F name. And on input for L name, we're gonna call handle L name. And on input for email, I'm going to do uh, handle email. Now, if you're sitting here and you're thinking, oh my goodness, like this can't possibly be the way to do this. If you're thinking that, great, because you'd be correct. <laughs> there is, this is definitely one way. And in fact, you'll actually see a lot of people uh, create forms this way um, in React and some other frameworks as well. Uh, I would argue that this is actually the wrong way to do it, um, but we'll actually start to build up to that uh, over time as we go through these videos, because you actually kind of have to see why even it's wrong in the first place and why there are better ways. So you kind of have to learn kind of the quote unquote worst way first. Not that this is terrible, but there are better ways than this if this seems a bit repetitive. Okay, so handle F name. What we're going to do is we're going to set the F name and we know that each of these gets an event. Um, and that's the event from that specific input uh, being changed. So we know that it comes with e.target.value. Um, and I'm going to do that for all of these. So I'm going to say set L name to e.target.value. Um, and if you're looking at this and being like, well, how does this work? Because these are all this looks like the same code. Well, we're setting the state for each of these depending on the different event that comes through, depending on which input is being typed into at that time. So we'll actually see that in action in a second. So I'll say set email to e.target.value. Now, again, this seems quite repetitive. And if you're thinking about that, absolutely, this is one of the reasons why this is really not the best approach, uh, but we will get there uh, in the future, in future videos for sure. And I'll mention it a little bit at the end of this one. Now. Let's see if this actually works. So um, what I'll do is um, for fun, let's just see if this uh, can get rendered. This would be actually the correct use for state. Um, in here, I'll put uh, F name, I'll put L name, and I'll put uh, email. Oops, not an EM tag, that is email. All right, so I'll save that here. Uh, I exported it and everything should be good. Now, if I type in this one, I get, um, I'll just put first, now I'll put last, uh, then I'll put email. So that's all working, right? Uh, we can see that in this H1 here, uh, we're getting those uh, correctly displayed. So that data is being saved somewhere um, and the state is being updated correctly. So we don't want this though, right? Uh, we're actually pretty close, but we don't want this specifically. We want to make it so that when you click on the submit button that this shows up. So how do we do that? Well, let me see what happens right now when we click the submit button. So I click submit and the page reloads. So that's kind of annoying. Um, the reason for this is kind of how just regular uh, the DOM works and how um, HTML is set up. Uh, and that's what that method is for. So if you're, if you're dealing with React, generally what you want to do is intercept that event and prevent the default behavior. The way to do that is to say on submit for the actual form, we want to actually um, prevent that event default. So I'm going to call uh, handle submit and I'm going to create a function here called uh, function handle submit. Um, and that is going to first get an event. And with that event, we're going to do e dot prevent, if I can spell <laughs> prevent default, just like that. Okay. Now, just with that code, and this is on the form element and on submit, um, handle submit is e.preventDefault, nothing else. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of this uh, first name, last name, and email here in the form as well. And I'll just log it out in here instead. I'll say log out, F name, L name, and email. Okay, because we don't want to do stuff in here um, with those values. Now, if I come back here to the console, and I say A, 
and I say B and I say C and I click on submit, I get ABC, but notice I didn't get a page refresh, right? Um, these values are still here in those input elements and the page didn't refresh and I actually get that logged out. So we have access to those values, even though they don't appear anywhere in our DOM. And this is why generally speaking, state is for this particular problem, at least the way that we have it set up, probably not the correct solution because we don't actually need to really re-render anything in the DOM when those values change per se. So let's switch back here and uh, take a look at what we want to do next. So what we wanted to do was uh, display that in the H1. So let's think about this. This is kind of a convoluted way to do this, but I did this on purpose just so that we can see kind of um, this, the flow of data and also kind of a bit of why state may or may not be useful in all cases. Um, what we want to do is we want to basically put these values, F name, L name, and email into here, right? But only when you click on submit. So, hmm, so that's interesting, right? Um, we, we saw what happened before when we put these kind of interpolated directly in here, those showed up before even clicking submit, which is not what we wanted. Uh, we want to make only when we click submit to actually show uh, those values in here. So we, we probably, that's what we need um, some kind of state for. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to say uh, const, uh, and I'll say uh, h1 text set h1 uh, set h1 text. Uh, that looks a little bit weird, but um, I'll go with that. Um, equals to use state, and to start, it's going to be an empty string. Okay, I'm going to take that h1 text. I'm going to put it here to start h1 text, just like that. So it's going to be an empty string. Now, what I want to do is change this state value, which means that when this setter function for the, the set h1 text gets called, React is going to re-render this DOM uh, here, or this part of the DOM right here, and it's actually going to show that inside of this h1. So really what we need is we're going to say set h1 text, and we're going to set it to, uh, I guess what we can do for now, is we'll just uh, do a fancy string here. I'll say first name um, is that, uh, last name, last name is that, uh, and then we'll say email is that. Okay, and I'll say f name. I forgot to put my dollar sign here. Uh, L name and email. Okay. Almost off the screen there, and it just fits. Okay, um, so what we're doing is we're preventing the default. And then we are setting these values to what they are going to be. So let's see if that works. So I'm going to switch back here. I'm going to start, start typing. Uh, I'll do Mr. And I'll say monkey. Uh, and my email is um, monkey at trees.com. And uh, I'll press submit. And fingers crossed. First name, Mr. Last name, monkey. And email is monkey at trees.com. So that's, that's pretty awesome, right? That actually works. Now. Uh, if, if you got to the stage, honestly, give yourself a pat on the back uh, because that's actually a pretty complicated series of steps. There's, there's kind of a lot of moving parts. We had to prevent the default. We had to deal with the form. We had some states. Did we really need it? It was a bit confusing. We had to create another state. Um, so all this kind of just was a bit of a mess, right? And if you're looking at this right now, there's already a bit of a kind of weirdness going on with these with these forms. Right. Um, let's fix that real quick, because I'm, I'm sure you're probably uh, if, you're, if you're like me you're looking at this, you're like, oh, I really don't like the fact that you submitted the form and these values are still here. Uh, that's not generally how a form works. Um, so what you would want to do in this case is when you click the submit is we want to clear out these uh, these form values. So um, let's uh, let's see if we can do that. So we'll say uh, under here, we'll say uh, af after the sorry, after the set H1 text to that. We'll say uh, set f name to empty string, and we'll say set l name to empty string, and we'll say set uh, email to empty string. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to reload the page. Uh, I'll put abc here. I'll put one two three, and I'll put one two three at abc.com, uh, and I'll, I'll press submit. Um, and it didn't really work. Okay. So that's that's a bit weird. Um, why didn't it work? Well, I'd like you to think about something for a second. Um, let me just maybe this will help you uh, trigger your memory here. So ABCD, 
one, two, three, four, and I'll leave the email the same and I click on submit. Um, and what's, what's kind of weird is we, we have that showing up and then we have kind of some weird behavior here with, with the rest of it. So it looks like things are getting blanked out. And if I click submit here, now everything is blank. But now if I start adding some text in here and I click submit, now that only has stuff, but this is blank, right? So what's happening here is a mismatch between our UI and what's in the state. And this is very, very dangerous, right? Uh, because if the user thinks something is in there, but the program thinks something else is in there, uh, then that is where we kind of end up with some problems. And this is also why um, this structure of setting things up with the state when we actually don't really need it as state is a bit dangerous. So um, what a lot of people do as a solution for this is they create what's called a um, uh, a uh, controlled input, which means that they actually uh, set the value of this to actually equal to what's inside the state as well. So um, the, the way to do this is uh, we will set the value of this input to be the state itself, just like that. And we'll do the same for this one. The value is going to be our name. And if you're, if you're thinking, oh my goodness, I just want to create a form. What is happening here? I don't like any of this. This is making me really sad. I'm 100% with you, um, but let's just see where this takes us. So we know that the value property um, inside of these inputs is actually what the, the text is gonna be. So um, let's see what happens here. So if I reload this page and I type A in here, and I type B in here, and I type C in here, and I click submit, well, that works correctly, and everything gets wiped out. If I type um, X in here, then I type Y in here, then I type Z, I'm getting a bit lazy with my typing, and I click Submit, everything gets wiped out correctly, right? So now I can do my stuff correctly. I can say Mr. Monkey, uh, ABC at, um, you know, ACF.com, <laughs> and that works correctly, uh, and everything gets wiped out, and I can fill in a bunch of stuff here, and that gets uh, wiped out correctly. So what we're doing now is we're syncing what's in the input uh, value with what's actually, um, being rendered and what's in the state. Um, because what's happening is when you trigger, when, when you type in here, we're triggering the on input, which is going to set the value for that, which is going to change uh, one of these states, which is then going to re-render that input with that thing inside of it. And that's going to be uh, the value for that thing. So if, if you're looking at this and being like, oh my goodness, I don't like this. I don't like it one bit. Um, I agree. And this is actually not a great solution for this particular problem. And this is why I put this in the exercises on purpose, because we do still see this a lot. And this is a very common, I guess, like quote unquote pattern that you'll see uh, people use um, because it, it just, it, when you're building up a form like this, it, it kind of makes sense that, oh, I probably need state and then I probably need this other thing. And then, oh, I have to sync them up. Um, and you end up kind of with this without actually uh, kind of going back to step one and realizing that there are better ways. So. Um, I want to kind of end this exercise here, uh, quickly touch on that there are better ways for this. There's a, like a form data API that you can use. There's refs that you can use. Um, there's just a whole bunch of other solutions specifically for working with forms that are way, way better than this solution. Some people like to use objects, which is kind of in between a solution. Um, not really as much a fan of that either. It's because it's just an abstraction on top of this idea. Um, but there are many solutions to actually solve this. And this is probably the, the most complicated of them all and the most prone to error, uh, even though it actually still works. Um, but there's just a lot going on that technically we could avoid. And a lot of this stuff um, is prone to bugs if you forget any little bit or if we have to add more inputs in the future. Um, it's just a lot of stuff you have to add and change every time things change in your program. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. I'll leave it at that one so that we can get to the next exercise. And if you have questions about that, definitely let me know in the comments. Okay, exercise number three. So, whew, so for this one, uh, I'd like you to create a profile.jsx file um, and put a profile component in there. And that profile component is going to uh, have some state in it that's going to be a string. I want you to initialize that state, so using use state to uh, the string logged in, okay, like right here. And then I want you to create a P, P element or a P tag uh, that gets returned uh, by this profile um, that has this uh, state text inside of it, okay? So 
it only returns uh, simply just a p tag that has kind of in the, the first render logged in, which is uh, tied to state inside that profile component. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. I want you to then create a button.jsx file uh, and create a uh, like a button component in there. And inside of that button component, I want you to create a um, a button uh, element. Let's just say element uh, with the text uh, toggle login inside. I'll, just, I'll change this to element element. Um, and there should be no state inside of this button element. Okay. What I want you to do though is make it so that. Uh, you add this button element, this, this big button right here, the, the actual one that's returning a button that has no state inside of it. I want you to add that to the bottom uh, under the P tag of this profile uh, element that we created before. So we've got two elements. We've got a profile, which has a P and then a button below it, and then the button element over here. Um, now, the question I have for you and the purpose of this exercise is uh, effectively uh, the next steps right here. How would you prop drill the ability for button to change the login text inside profile. So it should be able to tog toggle the text from logged in to logged out and back again, depending on how many times you click it. So again, there's a profile which has a paragraph and a, and a button inside of it. And then the button only has a button in it. Uh, the state is all held in profile. Uh, which means the state and the set state function are in profile. We need to find a way to get that over to button, which is the child of profile. So that when we click on that button, we can toggle the state inside the parent, which is profile. Okay. So um, this is something that confuses a lot of people um, when they first start dealing with state and, and prop drilling and things like that. So I, I really want to include this as an example um, so that we can also go through it together once you get a chance to try it yourself. So give that a shot and then import it and make sure it actually works. So when you click that button, it, the, the state toggles, logged in to logged out and back again, um, uh, no matter how many times you actually click that button. Um, and once you uh, have that working, uh, come back here and we'll take a look at it together. Okay. I just realized it should probably be step seven. Doesn't make sense to go back to step five. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll create a uh, exercise three here. Oops, a source, new folder, ex3. And I'll create a new file here. I'll call this profile.jsx. I'll also just create my uh, button.jsx in here. Why not? Uh, so inside profile.jsx, this is going to be a function profile. And I'm going to export default uh, profile, just so I don't forget. Um, and I'm going to return a P tag, which is going to have some state inside of it. So I'm going to import that. So I'm going to say import use state from react. And I'm going to say const, uh, logged or logged, I guess in, uh, text, uh, and then set logged in text, <laughs> very, very long function names, um, equals to use state. Uh, and that's going to be uh, logged in to start. Okay, now uh, I want to put that logged in text inside of this paragraph. And that's great. So that, that actually is as we expect. So um, then I'm gonna go into my button. I'm gonna say function button. Uh, and I'm going to return a, a button element. And that's going to say uh, toggle login. Great, and I'm going to export default this button element. Excellent. Now I'm going to import that in here as well into the profile. I'm going to say import button, which is coming from the current folder right here. Uh, and I want to put that uh, below this um, paragraph. So I need to wrap this. Oops, I need to not delete it. I need to wrap it like this. Um, and I'm going to uh, kind of wrap it like this. There is some shortcuts for this that I'll show you all later. Um, and I can take this and I can kind of put it in here and I can put my button uh, right over here. Okay. Um, so that's all fine and dandy. Then I'm going to switch over to main.jsx and I'm going to import profile from my exercise three folder and I'm going to switch my form out from my previous exercise with my profile. Phew, that was a lot. Okay, let's test this out. So I'm going to switch back to Chrome. There we go, logged in, toggle logged in. Absolutely nothing happens as we expect, uh, but everything is at least working in there. Cool. So um, how do we actually make this work? So our goal 
is to make it so our button here can call this function to change this text, which is going to re-render this paragraph. Okay. Now, how does this element or component that's a child of profile get access to this function? Well, we can pass it as a prop, right? So I'm going to pass it as a prop and I can call this prop whatever I want, but I'm going to actually uh, name it the same thing. I'm going to say this set logged in text is equal to set logged in text. Um, and this again, if you look at the props and prop drilling episode, uh, we can do whatever we want with uh, this name, uh, but uh, it gets set to a, a props object, which has this um, as the actual value with this key. Now, uh, inside of button, what I can do is I can grab that and destructure it up here. Uh, and I, uh, I forgot what I called that. What did I say? I think I called it set logged in text. I'll just paste it in there. Um, and what I want to do is when you when you click this button on click, I want to call set logged in text. So that's what I want to do. Um, but what do I want to set it to do? Well, this is not really going to do anything because this is just going to call the function and do nothing. So uh, we kind of need a way to call this function, but actually pass it a value. I want to be able to do like set logged in text to like logged out, for example. Now, I know that this is not going to work. And if you see that if I switch over here, it's automatically changing this to be logged out. So we know that this is being called. Um, and the reason it's being called is because we forgot to put this in a callback function. So uh, this is being uh, called as soon as button is being rendered and it's being set to logged out. Uh, so it's being set to logged in to start. And then this is rendering the button component coming in here, running all this code and immediately executing this, which is going to set it to be logged out. So what we need to do instead is uh, call a function that's going to call that instead. So I'm going to say a function, I'll just say uh, handle click. And then what I'll do is in that function, I'll uh, take that and I'll uh, move it up here and I'll, I'll, I'll pass a handle to that function just like this handle click and I'll try to be uh, logged out just to make sure it actually works. Now let me switch back to Chrome here. Um, I'll, I'll reload. It's back to logged in. Uh, and if I click toggle logged in, it's, it switches to logged out, but then it's just forever going to be logged out because that's all we have right now. So, okay. So that's cool. So it's actually working. Right. So what we have is a way to pass something into this component as a prop. And this component can actually call it um, even though it's been passed in from the parent, even though this is a function to change state. Now we need to know whether it was logged in or logged out. So we actually need access to logged in text. Now there is a better way for this, which we'll see a uh, hint hint in the bonus. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to pass that in as well. So I'm going to say uh, logged in text is equal to uh, logged in text it's almost off the screen there. Um, and I'm going to pull that in right here as another prop. The order doesn't matter because it's all coming in as an object anyways. Now what we can do is I can say if the logged in text is equal to logged in, then I want to uh, set it to be uh, logged out. Right. Um, otherwise, I want to set it to be logged in. Right, because that means it's logged out. And we're grabbing this value logged in text as the state from the parent, which means that when this changes, this also changes. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Um, I'm going to refresh this page. We start at logged in. I'm going to click login. Um, it's going to switch to log out and click it again. It's going to switch to log in, click it again, switch to log out, right? So it's constantly changing. Uh, and if I come in here and open the DOM up, you can see that that paragraph is the one that's being triggered to uh, re-render itself um, in the DOM. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, so the way that that's working is profile is passing button all of the data it needs to actually change the state in itself in the parent because that's being uh, set right here right um, so button has the ability to actually change the state but also read the state so in button we uh, have uh, we're returning a button uh, and it's calling a function every time we click that button and that function is checking to see what is the current state is it logged in well if it is then uh, change it to be logged out and if it isn't, then change it to be logged in. And that's going to cause this 
value here in the parent to change to whatever new value that is. And it's going to cause this to re-render and this paragraph to show the new value and also the new value to be passed into button. So a lot of things are happening here. There's a lot of uh, kind of wiring going back and forth with the state. I would also encourage you to put some console logs up here in the profile, some console logs up uh, down here, uh, outside all these functions and the return in the button, uh, and actually see when those console logs get run, just so you can get an understanding of how uh, the kind of re-rendering lifecycle actually works and if it works as you intend it, uh, as you intend it to. And we'll see a bit more of this in the next video when we actually look at a bit more of that with the use effect hook. Okay. Now, I know this is running long, but I couldn't help myself. Uh, I had to add a bonus to this video because it's such an important topic. So let's go ahead with one more, which is going to be the bonus exercise. Okay. Whew. So um, this one actually seems um, simple or trivial, but it really is uh, quite challenging. Um, so hopefully you can eventually kind of get a sense for it even after watching maybe the solution. So what I want you to do for this one is create a counter to JSX. I had to put a two there because we already created a counter previously, um, and uh, export uh, a counter com counter two component from it. Uh, inside counter two, I want you to create a, an h1 tag with a button, um, and this button is going to have a plus symbol inside of it, right? Just like our warm up exercise, but uh, we're only going to have one button in this case. Now, what I want you to do is make it so that the h1 starts at zero, so starts to display the number zero. But when you click the button, it goes up by two this time instead of one. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Natter. Uh, this, this doesn't make sense. Why is this a bonus? I can just say, you know, count plus two. So the caveat here is this. You can only use one event handler function, right? So like one handle click function, for example, to do this. And you must use two independent calls to the set state function where each of them makes the state go up by one. So you can't do like a set count, for example, if that's what you call it, you can't do like set count, count plus, uh, uh, count plus two. You also can't do, um, or I guess that's all you can't do in this case. You can't just do one uh, set count and count plus two to make it go up by two immediately. You actually have to do two set count functions in a row. Okay. Um, so that is the trick for this. Um, and uh, in this case, since we want to make it go up by two, of course, each of those is going to make it go up by one. So we want to do set count, count plus one and count plus one. Um, so each of them makes it go up by one. And you're probably thinking, oh, I can do that. Of course, this is very trivial, but try it out and you'll start to see some issues. And I want to see if you can actually get it to work um, and uh, explain and even better explain why it doesn't work um, if you don't do it a particular way. So again, you have to use two different set state functions, but you can use that one event uh, handler to actually uh, trigger those. Now uh, import that, make sure it actually works. Um, and the hint for this, if you need it, is that uh, look up the documentation. There's an alternative signature, uh, function signature for the set state functions in the use state hook for React. Um, and as a bonus, try to ask yourself, why does it work this way? And as a second bonus, can you actually use this idea to refactor uh, your exercise three, the one that we just did with the uh, the text uh, logged in and logged out, um, and only pass the set state function without actually passing the state itself. Um, so what that means is without actually passing the state value, just the function to change the state. Um, so that'll give you a bit of a hint as to kind of where you need to look and, and kind of maybe what the issue might be. Uh, give that a shot, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a bonus folder. And in there, I'm going to create a counter to dot JSX. Uh, I'll just do all the stuff to get us ready counter two, And in here, I'm going to return and I should probably wrap this. And in here, I'm going to do a, an H1. And I'm going to do a button. And I'm going to put a plus sign in here. I'm going to uh, export default the counter two. And save that. So it reformats a little bit. I'm going to uh, import use state uh, from React. And I'm going to say const uh, count set count and is to use state. And we're going to start at zero. And our button is going to do uh, count in here, which is going to start at zero. So that's all fine. 
Um, I'm going to switch over to my main.jsx and I'm going to import counter2 from bonus counter2. I'm going to switch this to counter2 and I'm going to switch to my Chrome. And there we go. That's actually showing and our button doesn't do every, anything at all as expected. Okay, so now um, that's all out of the way. Let's, let's take a look at how we might do this, right? So I'm going to create a function. I'll call this like handle click. And in this function, we want to make it so that we can change this count to make it go up by two. So I said we can't do this, right? Uh, this would be, in this example, cheating. So I can say count plus two, right? Um, take the current count and add two to it and set the on click for the button to refer to this handle click function and save that. And I'll switch back here. And indeed, it does go up by two, uh, which is quite wonderful. Okay, so that's uh, that's cheating. Uh, I don't want you to do that. I want you to make it so that you can only make it go up by one here at a time, which means that we actually need two of these. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and before I run this code with all the kind of build up to this, I want you to think for a second: what number are we going to see when we click this button? All right, so I'll switch back here. And intuitively, you probably say, well, it's going to go up by two because we did two set counts of going up by one. I'm going to click it, and huh, it only goes up to one. Then it goes up to two. Then it goes up to three. Then four. Okay, so it's only going up by one each time, which doesn't really make sense because we have two set counts. We saw that when we did it plus two, it went up by two. But when, I, when we split it up like this, it only goes up by one. So Herein lies the very, very important uh, kind of conceptual uh, visual modeling you need to actually understand how this is working. Um, we know that uh, these set set like set handlers set count in this case uh, do not run right away. We know that they get pushed off into memory to be run later uh, in sequence. Uh, I think I had a drawing for this. Uh, yeah, there we go, right here. Right. So we saw that uh, all these uh, set uh, state methods get put into computer memory uh, and uh, that's where the state is stored. And they also uh, store the order um, that they're created and a bunch of other things. And they uh, they run asynchronously. So when we saw this, for example, we saw that um, the the counter uh, doesn't get updated synchronously with the set count function. Okay. And that's the framework we need to realize in order to make sure that we understand what's going on here. So what this is really doing, it's doing set count. Well, what is count currently? Zero plus one. Okay, so then what is this doing? Well, it's doing set count of, well, what is count currently? Well, count hasn't changed between this line and this line, right? It hasn't changed. Um, it is zero, right? Count is equal to zero when we start this function. So this actually is doing zero plus one. All right, because count just gets replaced by whatever count was when we called this function, which is zero. Um, so this is a problem, right? <laughs> of course, this is a problem. So uh, we, we, we can't do this. We because this is a static value that gets set as soon as we call this function and these go off and do their thing a bit later and then re-render um, the counter function. So we need a way to actually get access to the live uh, count after the previous set state calls. So um, what that means is even though this is going out to um, it's going out to memory and, and kind of storing its thing and then running. Uh, if we have a bunch of these in a row, what we want to tell React is, hey, I know that these are all run in a row, uh, but I actually need the live updated value. So if you just updated it through a set state and you're running another set state like literally right after, I want you to give me the new value for this iteration of the set state uh, before you do any re-renders because I need the updated values so I can do whatever it is I need to do. So. Um, if we look, uh, if we go to Google really quick, and I'll type in uh, React, and I'll say use state just so we can see how this works. Um, let me zoom in a little bit more here. Uh, React use state API uh, right here. I think this goes to legacy uh, API. So this says say it's not, no longer updated. Go to react.dev. Um, I think these go there as well. I'm going to click on use state right here. That's going to take me um, over here. Uh, and I want to see the, the kind of usage of how this works. 
Um, so we can do a uh, use state, uh, we can do initial state, and then uh, where is the return value, parameters, returns. So um, where is the uh, set set function that lets you update the state? So I'm going to click on this, the set function that lets you update the state. Uh, set function return lets you update the store a different value, trigger a re-render. You can pass the next state directly or a function that calculates it from the previous state. This is the most uh, important sentence in kind of uh, this, uh, for, for this example at least. So they have an example here. You can call uh, the set states like this. I'll zoom in a little bit more just so it's really, really obvious, uh, where you pass it a value directly, or we can pass it a function that calculates it from a previous value. In this case, A is just a previous value, okay? Um, and then there's more information uh, down here uh, as well as to how that actually uh, works. So what that means for us is instead of doing this, what we can do is we can say previous count and we can say the previous count plus one, just like that. So I'm gonna pass in an arrow function and I'm gonna refer to that value that's given to us by React right here. And that's React is gonna go out and find the current value for that before everything gets re-rendered uh, in case it just got updated by another hook in this component, okay? And, uh, or even another component for that matter. So we want the live value and we're gonna take that live previous value and add one to it. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna set count to the previous value is gonna be zero because that's what we start this with and we're gonna add one to it. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get one. And then this one is going to not be zero now to start our previous count is going to be one because we're gonna get one and we're gonna do one plus one. I'm doing this really slowly just so it's super obvious. And we're gonna get, lo and behold, two, right? One plus one is two. Um, and we can call this whatever we want. It doesn't matter, previous, uh, we, uh, just be careful uh, with the name clash with this. That might get a little bit confusing for people. So I always like to give it a different name. Um, and, but this is an arrow function in this case uh, or a, any function that we get access to the previous value as the first argument that gets handed to us by React and we can use it uh, to actually update the state. Um, and that takes this computed value right here and puts that as the set state, okay? Now let's see if this works. I'm gonna switch back to Chrome. I'm gonna go back to my uh, app here. I'm gonna reload it and click this button. And there we go. It went up to two, to four, to six, to eight, okay? So that is pretty awesome. Okay, this is really, really cool stuff. Um, what we have here is the ability to actually not only get live access to the state, but we can also actually get access to like the, the state without actually having to pass this state around, right? Notice we nowhere in this function did we use the count variable, which is pretty cool, right? Um, so that actually is the second bonus, which is that if we were to go back to our exercise three, uh, technically, and I, I won't do this, I'll leave this as an exercise to you. Um, we don't need to pass in this logged in text. We could actually compute everything we need with just the setter function, because in button, we can get access to, instead of setting it directly using uh, logged in text, um, uh, we can we can do some kind of, uh, some magic in here. Uh, so it, you'd have to change this code a little bit. Uh, so you would basically get the previous value of the state you would check it there, and then you would set it uh, to the correct thing inside of the, the setter function. Okay, so I'll leave that as an exercise to you if you're interested in that. Uh, but the main thing here is that we now have a way to um, update the state uh, without even needing the variable, uh, but most importantly, to update it to the live values in case we have conditions like this, where we need to update it multiple times uh, within one render pass of our function. Okay, definitely a bit more advanced, but something that you might run into and cause a lot of bugs if you're not careful in your actual applications. So I know this was a long video, um, but I hope that those exercises were valuable for you. I tried to make them um, kind of tricky, but also build up to something a bit more complicated so that you could have as much practice as possible. You will run into these quite often uh, in the industry, in the real world, as you're building these applications. Um, if you did like the video, I would love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Um, I also recently uh, set up a Patreon and YouTube memberships and super thanks. So if you want to support the channel, feel free to check those out as well. Uh, what we're going to do in the next video together is go over uh, the next hook that we need to learn together, which is called the use effect hook. This one is um, 
kind of a fraught with lots of perils. Um, and there's, it's probably the most misunderstood hook. Uh, frankly, even as I was kind of explaining uh, or creating the slides and, and kind of what I want to talk about for the hook, I even made a few mistakes myself as I was uh, preparing for it, uh, because it's just, there's just so much going on with that hook. So I really wanted to put together um, a, a video that might be a bit long um, on, on how the, the use effect a hook works and that's going to allow us to actually uh, hook directly into this render cycle of uh, mounting and unmounting components and updating of state uh, and the re-renders and actually do uh, what are called side effects where we can do things like data fetching or set up event listeners or intersection observers and all that kind of stuff that right now it's not immediately obvious how we would actually do that so that is react's way of dealing with it um, and we're going to take a look at that in the next video together um, so until that one, I will see you later. Bye-bye.